what is qimar, what is gambling, and how does this gambling industry work? It's like when sometimes you get text messages that if you ring this particular number for a small charge, you have a chance of winning something. And what happens is that the, the company, they go to so many people that they end up uh, with an income or turnover of five million pounds. And then they pr prize the winner, he may attain a million. So they've profited four million and they've given a million to the winner. And the reality is that those people who are taking part, either they profit or they lose. And in the majority of the cases, 99% of those people are all losers and there's one person who may profit and this is haram. So these competitions, which all of you know and hear of and you receive these messages in this manner, if you ring in and you're going to be charged X amount and then you have a chance to win this prize, all of this is haram. If the person objects and he says, but I've only paid 10 pence for my phone call, text message, even that is haram. Uh, Sheikh Ibrahim, his uh, zabain, his uh, customers, hey, uh, and the turnover of his supermarkets is declining. So in order to attract new customers, he places uh, an attraction there. And he says that he displays his Mercedes and he displays his Porsche and he says that the winner will get one of these cars. So is this type of attraction, is this halal or haram? So if Ibrahim asks that is this type of attraction, is this permitted, we ask him, are you charging people to enter into this draw? Or have you raised the price of your merchandise in order for people to enter into this draw? And if he says no, I myself, I am paying for the Porsche, I'm just using it to attract customers, but there's no entrance fee, and the merchandise is, at his, is as it was. Then we say that this is halal. But if he says no, how this competition works is that each person buys a raffle ticket. And the price of that raffle ticket is 10 pence or a pound. And they place it in the box. And then I choose a raffle ticket and the winner gets the Porsche or the Mercedes. Why? Because there's costs and there's admin fees. And they, you know, I won't take out some of these costs. This is haram. And, and this is prevalent. I mean, there'll be a raffle ticket, a piece of paper. And this piece of paper is for a pound of particular price. It's haram. So now there's a new iPhone which is about to come out and it is iPhone 14. And because of this iPhone 14, which, is, which the release is ensuing, he has uh, many iPhone 13s and therefore he wants to make a competition. So what did he do? So, for example, if the iPhone 14 is about to be released, and he has much stock of iPhone 13. And he wants to get rid of his iPhone 13s. So what he says is he makes the prize, which is his Mercedes. And he says that buy the iPhone 13s. And one of those people who buys all these iPhones, one of them, he will be the winner and he will win the Mercedes. Now, the iPhone 13, it was, for example, a thousand pounds. But in order to enter this competition, he has increased the price of each iPhone by 100 pounds or 200 pounds. This now is also haram. And let's say if he discounts the iPhone 13 by 50%, is it allowed for him to discount the price? Now it's permitted. And if he says that whoever buys an iPhone from the market today, from my supermarket today, he will have a general 10% discount on anything else in the supermarket. Halal. Halal, this is also halal and, and this is also halal why because the base ruling when it comes to buying and selling is that matters are halal unless there's an evidence which specifically makes it haram 